Welcome back everyone. This is Red Spotlight here with an exclusive on YouTube. Hi guys. Um, <laughs> our video now. Uh, this is Alexis Soto here and I'm joined by the other Alexis. That would be Alexis Moreno and also David Francisco. And today we're doing something different. We're not going to be talking, you know, doing a podcast uh, in that way. We might do one later on um, talking about what we're doing today in, in a more in-depth way. But... We're going to try and do a live reaction of sorts to the new Disney Plus Lucasfilm Star Wars show Ahsoka. <laughs> starring, I don't know why I over <laughs> Lucasfilm. <laughs> starring, uh, so, um, well, starring Rosario Dawson. I almost thought said Ashley Eckstein, but then that would have been a bit um, insulting now, wouldn't oh. it? Yeah. Oops, had to catch myself there. I mean, because I don't know what could be more insulting than getting replaced, right? Um, oops. Anywho, um, we're doing. We're, we're going to react live to this episode for the first time. This is going to be uh, part one, and yeah, um, it's going to be fun, interesting in a way. <laughs> I, I feel fun. like we, we need to explain <laughs> some things. Um, all three of us here are very much in the minority of Star Wars fans. In that, we do not like Mandalorian. We do not like really anything involving John Favreau, and we especially were. Mm, put off. We'll put it that the nice way of saying it. We're put off by the whole um, characterization of Ahsoka Tano in the Mandoverse. And yes, we recognize that it was written by Dave Filoni, and we we understand um, that that kind of is the reason why it worked out that way. I guess, like, really, our problems in a nutshell is that the way that her character was portrayed in those live action shows in some ways, no way resemble the character we fell in love with in the animated universe. And we are all huge. I mean, again, that's just us, right? That's that's our group here that really does not like those shows um, at all. However, we love the Filoni-verse in the animated space. Um, we all love the Clone Wars, which, by the way, just celebrated this past week. It's 15th anniversary. 15th anniversary, which is insane to me. Uh, we uh, and of course this is going to be very heavily um, a follow up to Star Wars Rebels, which um, since Peter isn't here, all of us love. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if he was here, then this probably wouldn't be as fun, um, and he knows it. Uh, and I don't think he'll watch it, um, but we'll see how it goes. Um, and I know David and I have watched Bad Batch, and we really like Bad Batch. And this yeah. past season was really really good. Mm -hmm. um, this past season actually had a finale uh, that had a particular send off for a character that I'm still mad about because I feel like they were really developing something special with him. And I kind of wanted him to have a bigger role in the following season. And yet, well, he was written off. And so, mm. yeah, um, the animated star Wars stuff is really special and it really kind of, you know, fleshed out the mythology of star Wars in a way that I always thought was interesting and cool and really made me appreciate the whole universe and the movies more I feel like um, while I never super hated the prequel movies, um, the only way I can get through them nowadays <laughs> is because I, I know more of what goes on. Um, and thanks to the Clone Wars itself, I feel like it really redeemed so much of what the prequel trilogy was trying to communicate but failed so spectacularly <laughs> in the movies themselves. Um, that's just kind of how it ended up being. But Ahsoka Tano is a legendary character. Um, a lot of people love her, and I have become a little bit disillusioned over the last couple of years in the fact that Rosario Dawson's portrayal of the character has seemingly been very much cold, distant, and em not emotionless, but just like personalityless. And I, th I feel so messed up saying this because it's going to make me seem like a right wing troll. <laughs> um, and David's going to know exactly what I'm saying here. But those negative attributes that I just pretty much put at the foot of Rosario Dawson pretty much are the same issues I had with Jodie Whittaker and her characterization of the doctor in Doctor Who, <laughs> which is pretty interesting how it, it just kind of clicked into my mind how both of them, from a characterization standpoint, kind of have the same problems. Um, and by the way, the Jodie Whittaker uh, performer was taking on a, a longstanding role in which that you can say a lot of things about Doctor Who that are issues or problematic, 
but it always had its characterization down until that particular iteration came along and it kind of and it wasn't because she was a woman mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it was, wasn't because of it was, it was because the man that took over yes. had no idea what he was doing or he had no idea what this actually was and mm-hmm. if he did well it was some of the worst writing i've ever seen um and by the way i didn't even watch the last two seasons i <laughs> Or the, la- or the last season and whatever specials because I just feel like it's just a waste of time. And so I am hoping – and I think all of us here are ho- – I speak for all of us. When we're hopeful that what we're getting into is going to be at the very least enjoyable and fun because, again, we love the Rebels character. It's going to feature Hera and Sabine and others and Chopper, of course. And it's going to be in very much a spiritual successor. We, we, we hope the best for it. I still, even though I have issues with him these days, I still hope the best for Filoni to turn around and make something really special because this is the first thing that's solely written by him in live action and not influenced, well, I shouldn't say influenced, but not involved directly Favreau. While we're still pissed off at Favreau, it's because he did influence the overall direction of this show where it was originally supposed to be an animated series following up on Rebels, and he came in and basically thought it was a better idea to scrap what they were doing. Sorry, all the voice actors. I guess you were not that special. Again, another insult. And let's just do it in live action. And that's what Lucasfilm decided to do, and this is where we're at. And so even though we may end up liking this, who knows, a lot of us are still quite spiteful of the fact that what is clearly a superior medium, and that is animation... The superior version of the story was robbed from us, and we're not going to forget that. And it is going to bother us in places when we see some deficiencies. I know clips came out already of the show, and it looked really, like, grayed out, like a Marvel TV show. I haven't seen the trailer. I'm literally going in this, like... Okay, well, good, good. Yeah, I've I've seen, like, comments that people have made of, like, some of the lines. Yeah. I haven't seen that. I've seen more so the way that it looks from a color Uh standpoint. They're not popping as much as they would in animation, which obviously that Mm. wouldn't be the case. But that's what happens, John Favreau, when you think that animation somehow is an inferior medium. I mean, many would argue that the best film of this year and one of the best films of this generation is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Hell, I think I would give it best picture right now. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But it won't even get nominated because it's an animated movie. So, I mean, what are we doing here? We, this is, we, we've had the Mutant Mayhem movie. We've had Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, which just hit Netflix, by the way. And it's, again, getting a new wind of success because of it. Arcane, uh, which I, I, mean, I don't know what is taking so long for season two to come out. <laughs> we I need know. Arcane back. So it's like we're living in a revolution here of beautiful animation, maybe the best animation that's ever been made. Um, and yet... We're getting this. And so that's just a long preamble. That way you guys understand where we're coming from. And and hopefully this will kind of uh, give you guys an understanding as to like what our potential issues would be while we see them happening. So that's kind of a quick thing. Did you guys have anything else you wanted to add as to what I've been saying? Not necessarily. I think just, you know... Clone Wars is why I started liking Star Wars, so yeah. <laughs> I it's, mean, yeah, um, yeah it, it, it's special for sure. Yes, for it you. Is. And I know one of my one of my favorite reactions from you was when I think it was <laughs> that year. It was 2015. We were, we were getting you into Star Wars, and when we're watching Revenge of the Sith. Um, yeah, oh, I think yeah. you had been seeing Clone Wars, and then I had told you about a comic. I think the Kanan comic that showed that uh, all of the the Jedi or some of the Jedi were feeling through the Force. All of their their friends just die and be killed off, and you were like, "Oh my God, that's so sad." Yeah, it was so sad. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I remember. Yeah, because after I finished watching Clone Wars, I had seen the prequels. Um, and I'd seen bits and pieces of the originals, but um, that day that we went to Kyle's house and had a whole yes. Star Wars marathon, that was the first time I'd seen like all of them complete. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. And Order 66 just like hit yeah. me. And again, I had just finished watching Clone Wars. Oh, man, that was rough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it would have been rough if at the time. 
they had completed Clone Wars because uh, again, yes. the, oh the final God. season Can didn't come imagine? out until I'm 2020. I'm so jealous of people <laughs> that like get to experience it that way. Oh my God. Oh my God. Man. <laughs> Speaking of things that really didn't sit right, like man, when when that back in 2013, I think that was 2013, ten, ten years ago. <laughs> 10 years oh ago God. is when the show first went off the air because I remember it's like fuck, they had just finished the, the the Ahsoka wrong Jedi arc which was amazing everybody was buzzing about what was next for the show and then IGN reported it was cancelled <laughs> see I didn't live through that so <laughs> I lived through that I lived through that I came in was... the, the year after <laughs> I'm one of the ones where, like, I literally watched this from the very first time. I watched the movie. (laughs) The 2008 movie, which was just the first four episodes stitched together into a movie. I watched that in theaters. And then I watched the first episode on Cartoon. And I watched every episode on Cartoon Network. And then the last, uh, well, the first last season, The Lost Missions on Netflix. And and then... um, I sticked. I, I mean, I, I had such faith in Filoni and, and and that team, and most of that team carried over into Rebels, and I loved Rebels. And in some ways, I think Rebels is a better show as far as like having a, a consistent mm-hmm. group of characters. Whereas Clone Wars was very ep- well ep- episodic and also like um, anthology, and you had a, a range of characters, which, which which made that show special in its own right. But Rebels had a consistent crew, and I feel. Um, uh, I, I mean, I adored those seasons. In uh, season four, three and four are like, but they're all good though. Like mm-hmm. it, it's such a, a good show to, to recap. And I feel like Rebels really made me appreciate the era of the original trilogy a lot more. And again, at that time, I had begun to appreciate the OG trilogy even more. So not that I'd never appreciate, I've always loved those movies, but that whole era of Star Wars really made and then i got sick of it because like lucasfilm kept refusing to move on from that era of star wars and anything and just real quick though uh for people who uh also want to get i know some star wars fans will immediately would have already closed this out when we said that we didn't like mandalorian um maybe some more would be pissed off when i said we loved andor and last jedi (laughs) so bye (laughs) some of you Um, I also loved The Force Awakens. Um, I happen to really enjoy uh, Revenge of the Sith. And... Um... Oh, and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, yes. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We forgot about yeah. that one. <laughs> we forgot about that one. Um, and then everything else, well, it ranges. I like the third act of Rogue One. Yeah. Hey, mm-hmm. I may like Rogue One better. We'll see how Andor Season 2 uh, yeah, yeah. leads up to it. Mm-hmm. So. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, so it's oh, man. like I miss Andor. That was a good. I know, I know, I know. And and in the in the next podcast, we got to talk about the. It was kind of a bombshell that news that came out of nowhere. Disney releasing their their signature streaming shows on physical media was like, "Whoa, you guys are desperate for money." Yeah. <laughs> yes. But you know what? Like, I want that one division <laughs> one. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I did. Yeah. I I didn't read the whole thing. I know I am the one that sent it. Was it just those four? For yeah. now. Okay. okay. It was it, no. It was two. It was two Star Wars, two Star Wars and two Marvel. Loki, because Loki two season Loki season two is coming out, and mm-hmm. Loki one division, and then the first two seasons of Mandalorian. Those are the ones. And I feel like they're testing the waters, and if they do really well, I'm thinking they're going to do the rest of them. And yet here, I will forever wait until Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. gets anything appropriate. It is the <laughs> one show in North America in this genre that has yet to see a Blu-ray release. I know that in other nations, like Japan and China and other regions have the Blu-rays. But it's like this show, even though all the CW shows have DVD and Blu-ray releases, and even the, the Marvel Netflix shows have Blu-ray and DVD releases, this one... Despite its small but active fan, I, I I swear to God, the Agents of Shield fan base is so like rabbit for anything that if you put out a complete series DVD official, not like bootleg, but an official one, every single last one of them would go <laughs> and buy it, like seriously. So, uh, just hey, 
if Disney is that desperate for cash to even put those shows on, it's just like, hey, getting them on there. Um, I Real quick thing. I don't know. It's not related to this at all. But, like, um, I'm tempted to get the Cinderella 4K because I've I heard know. some really good things I, I about saw, it. I've seen, like, pictures of it. It looks so yeah, good. it looks amazing. It looks so good. But and we then got there's a the Snow White one. coming out next uh, soon. Mm-hmm. We got the last no. one. Oh, the 2019 one? Yeah. Okay, the 2019 one I found out was just a reissue of the 2012 one. They did no changes to that one at all. This one is a true 4K restoration. And you can tell, like, they're just still... Yeah, it looks The picture is just different. The colors. And I'm happy at least Disney's doing that. Hey, yeah. Disney's doing something good in restoring their classic films. I know Snow White is going to get a 4K one in the same vein. I want the a, Snow a White new, one. We don't uh, have Snow White. Yes. I don't have a... Wait, no, I do. I do. Ha- I have both of them. I, I th- Through different collections. But, like, I mean... To me, 4K really works on older movies, uh-huh. um, and I'll, I'll, I'll well, well, we'll have a whole podcast on that because I mean, it's uh, physical media is amazing. All of us have loved it, and um, it it's it kind of makes me cry a little bit to think that Disney is like, hey, maybe we're not going to kill it off after all. Yeah, so yeah, we'll see. I feel like we were all very it. surprised. <laughs> we're just like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> and we can finally do like a show and tell thing. Because we do a video now. <laughs> it, it, it makes me think of like of Loki. Um, one of the, it's funny how it's from a movie that no one really loves, The Dark World. But when Thor <laughs> comes to him in his cell, and it's like, imagine that's Bob Iger going back into the Disney physical media vault, and then Loki says, "You must be truly desperate <laughs> to come to me for help." <laughs> Which I get it, man. I mean, we I, in our last episode, which is on YouTube right now and anywhere you listen to podcasts, I feel Peter and I kind of like went at it as to like how fucked he is. Like, yeah. I don't see, I don't see, I don't know why he came back. Yeah. <laughs> I think he screwed himself over. He does not look happy. And he, I wouldn't be happy. Yeah. Because there's and just I no way to get say, out of this. Because I, I did listen to that. Um, we were very... <laughs> No, I wouldn't say like excited, but felt relieved. We're all well, we... big Disney fans. You know, we felt relieved that he came back because the person that was there before was not. He was sick. Not it. Um, hmm. So that's why we were very excited about him coming back. But mm-hmm. it's true. Like, not the best <laughs> time for him at the moment. <laughs> If Disney Plus is the, I mean, look, think about this. If Disney Plus was doing well, would they really be releasing their signature shows on physical media? Now, granted, Netflix has released their shows on media, some of them, not all of them, but that's Netflix. They're a very different model, very different company. Disney is very, very particular. And I don't think if, if Disney Plus was making so much right now, they wouldn't be stressing. Um, But like I said, um, l- extend the theatrical window. This forty-five days business is like no. it's crap. Yeah, and we need to make time in the next podcast. And I need you two to be on it because we need to talk about Blue Beetle because Blue Beetle is a movie that is just being punished for outside factors. Mm-hmm. Blue Beetle, um, I think, did something really well in terms of representation that most of these films in the comic book space haven't come close to talking. And I think there is a, a core heart that so many Marvel movies miss in just this small little DCEU movie or DCU movie, whatever you want to call it. Um, not that it's a perfect movie. I mean, it's mm-hmm. a, it's a superhero film and we'll get and get into that in the next podcast and everything. But I just like, Hey, <sighs> luck of the draw. Um, so yeah, guys, uh, Mando wasn't good. Season three was particularly pathetic. I don't know if you saw season three of Mando, but that was just like, what are we doing here? Even even fans. Well, see, oh, that's right. Well, season three, even fans of the first two seasons were like, what are we doing here, guys? Um, Remember Boba when nobody Fett, talked about it? No. Boba Fett was Oh, pathetic. my God. That was t- complete <laughs> trash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was complete trash. So... All right, I guess we've had enough. Let's go ahead and get started and see how this thing goes, guys. <laughs> Again, so what we're going to do now is on all of our own ends, we have the Disney Plus uh, window up 
and running, and we're going to all press play at the same time, and we're going to synchronize it. So you're going to hear us say, in three, two, one, go. And if you like to as well, you can watch with us. But I understand, of course, that in the YouTube version, it's going to be cut down. If we had a Patreon, we'd do the whole thing on. But what the fuck are we going to launch a Patreon? We just went on YouTube I know. <laughs> on video. So, I mean, hey, if anybody wants, reach out. Uh, I know. We never I leave know. any contact. Everybody, but you can just put in the comments. If you guys watch us, please leave a comment. We've, yes. we've never talked to anybody besides ourselves. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and we have subscribers. Like, it, we literally we, have we over a thousand subscribers. <laughs> and so, it, it'd be nice to, like, get to know y'all, whoever you are. I hope you're not we just have subscribers. Now we can. <laughs> Again, yes. it's, been a, it's been a while since we've shown our faces. Man, we should have had that. I sh- had that thing thing done before I like scared off so many Star Wars fans with our like opinions. <laughs> <laughs> well, Damn you know, it. our one thousand followers know by now. <laughs> so it's like again, like we're on audio, Red Spotlight Entertainment. You know, anywhere you listen to podcasts, and we're gonna do our best to. Um, you know, keep it consistent with you guys. The last two episodes also had a video component. I was kind of really happy with how they, I think they ended up looking really good considering our limited resources. And so yeah. we're going to do our best that we can do. We'll, we'll keep getting better at it. We'll keep working at yes. it. I know it's, it looks a little rough right now, but I'm excited about it. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, a crawl. Yeah. Didn't expect that. If y'all saw, wait, what was it, Mandalorian, the last season, you would know this, <laughs> if anyone saw it. <laughs> I know, right? That was the one thing that, that was the one scene that I liked, was when all the Imperial officers were, like, having, like, a powwow. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm hoping they finally killed off, what's his name, Moff Gideon, because I never liked him. <laughs> yeah. Another controversial opinion. I, I guess. Nothing. <laughs> I mean, I love the actor, but, like. He could have been yeah, so much better. Yeah, he's great. He could have paid Thrawn. <laughs> I know, I know. Dude, can you imagine? Oh my god, now I'm just thinking about it. Ah, oh, shit. Now you tell me. <laughs> in the beginning of this episode. But Lars Mikkelsen, who played him in animation, he's the one that gets to come back. Yeah. I should have clarified, he's the other cast member that gets to come back here. And play Admiral Thrawn. Which I don't think we're going to see here, in this episode. No, I doubt it. Where did she find that ship? I think that's the villains, isn't it? You think it's the Inquisitors? Yeah. Well, these people are about to die. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Because, I mean, they said they had a prisoner. (laughs) And so, I would... I would probably guess they would use that. Oh, you're right. I thought that was Ahsoka's ship. I don't know how Ahsoka's ship looks like, but... Well, it said that Ahsoka captured somebody. Are you an idiot? Hmm. That actor died, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. I like how the girl looks, but it also just kind of makes me mad that they haven't done a Ventress show. <laughs> Don't even get me fucking started on that bitch. <laughs> Seriously, not. I, I didn't call her a bitch on on that. That the whole situation's a bitch. Why is she always left? Whatever. Yeah, that's why I imagined. Yeah. I imagine she, like, shows up. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, she came out in Mandalorian. Yeah, she was the one that Ahsoka captured. That's when she first said, where's your master? Where is Grand Admiral Thrawn? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. okay. I did see yeah. that part. Okay. Mm-hmm. That was a fine beginning, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. I, I like it visually so far. Like, I don't know. It's just like, it looks like Better. original trilogy. Um, yeah. But, and talk about the quality of it, you know. Sure. No, I understand. Uh, so what was the, the decision behind that lightsaber? Did it seem orange to you? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think some people pointed that out before. Was it more red or red orange? Red orange, basically. Is this Dune? <laughs> A couple of monks singing off in the distance. (laughs) See, I'm just going to say it right now. What is it that she's really after? Does she really want to find Ezra? Or is she more concerned about Thrawn? Because I feel like the Ahsoka from Rebels would have been more about like, let's get Ezra. 
But oh. this Ahsoka, I'm like... Ah, I see what you mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. At least they fixed her Leku, right? Like they're a little longer than they were. I re That's one of the things that put me off in her debut in Mandalorian, that they, they made it shorter because it would have been impractical to do it in live action. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, this, if you see it here, this looks closer to what it looked like in Rebels, but <laughs> uh, in Mando, it was... No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like she cut her hair or something. <laughs> like, you can do that? <laughs> and I know we're, like, knocking down this already we've knocked it down quite a bit but she really does look good she looks really good no yeah she really could have been great it's just that they even said this that they were trying to go for a gandalf character but that's just not her <laughs> <laughs> oh that's the thing from the fifth element you know the <laughs> You guys ever seen that? See, I was thinking, <laughs> I was seeing something else. Like David, I was getting real like quake vibes from this. Remember uh, when she first yeah, transforms yeah, yeah. in the temple in the underground city? Yeah, yeah. Like and it's the same kind of cylinder shape. Like something pops out, and then even the color of the temple is the same way. Mm. Isn't that the thing that Peter Quill finds in the first Guardians? <laughs> Dude, every, we can make a bunch of references to a bunch of stuff. But like, this is basically just well, so many things like into the, one. I like the map from... Um, Treasure Planet. Treasure Planet. This is David Tennant. Is it? Yeah. He plays a robot. David Tennant, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Who are you? Why are you just standing there? <laughs> Wouldn't you just go in? I know. Oh. That felt like a very OG trilogy transition. Mm hmm <laughs> I mean, With the wipe and everything. Yeah. Yeah, see, I'm noticing, like, the quality. Like, this... I don't know how to explain it, but, like, there's almost this graininess to it that makes it look like original trilogy footage or something. Mm-hmm. I really like it. <laughs> it's like, please keep that up. <laughs> <laughs> they look like, a. Um... Toys. <laughs> <laughs> so they're not gonna bring up her child. Or... I know. Um, as I say, it would have been kind of cool if they would have started the episode with, cause didn't they do like a, uh, like the Avatar thing? Um, not the first show, but the second one. What's it called? Um, Korra, where they did like the voiceover. Like a news thing? Didn't they do that oh. in Clone Wars? Yeah, Wouldn't yeah, that yeah. Wouldn't that be cool if they would have started it that way? Is that? That's it is. Okay. Richard, he played, um, what's this called? Um, what's his name? I forget his name. In what? So... He oh, also he... is returning from Rebels. Mm. Ryder Azadi. He was the former governor during the Republic, and then he was put in... He was replaced, and then they broke him out. Mm. He voiced that character, and now he's playing him in live action. That's cool. Interesting. <laughs> he also um, voiced Savage Press, if you forgot. And Mr. Krabs on Spongebob. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say Mr. Krabs too, but <laughs> he also, I think he did in the Last Airbender season two. Didn't he play the? He's done so he's much. He's done a lot. Yeah, I for sure. He's <laughs> he was in an episode of The Punisher, not The Punisher, uh, Daredevil. Really? Yeah. Huh. I really like it when they change like the score or the or the soundtrack I guess in some of the Star Wars shows like with Andor like with like Andor he, dude that, was... that little beach place that he went to the music there I was like oh I like this this is nice and then I remember I think it might have been the end of the second episode where they just like blasted the drums or something it was cool every now and then they'll do that hmm. Okay, but, like, Ahsoka is supposed to be that cool, too. <laughs> and I have not seen that. I mean, I did like that bit where she went down the hole and, like, made other holes. Like, that one, 
that was pretty fun. <laughs> but that's about it. <laughs> I should know. Um, Kevin Kiner comes back to the music here. He's done the music for all of Clone Wars and all of Rebels, and I, I've already picked up uh, a, a lot of the motifs that he uh, created. You've already heard. Maybe if you haven't heard it in a long time, before, he's already played. Ahsoka's theme, Hera's mm-hmm. theme, and then also the one that just played right now was Sabine's theme that we first heard in Trials of the Dark Saber, which everybody except for Peter Martinez thinks is one of the best episodes of the animated series. <laughs> <laughs> and That's Ezra's theme right there. Oh. Oh, really, family. So, um, how long? Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. Didn't did he seem a little too old to you in that? Yes. The actor playing Ezra there. Yes. <laughs> How long is it supposed to be? Is that what... Since that happened? Uh-huh. <sighs> By my Give or take sister. seven years. That's the being generous, I think. Is she? Was that supposed to be an implication she's a Dathomiri witch or something? Maybe. They I did. shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> I mean the murals. Why? Why? The murals kind of look like them, don't they? That marking on her forehead. Yeah. What is that? That looks like a marking on Ventress's. Ahsoka Tano's former apprentice is on the thou. How is this known? They were never. How do they know about that? That's true. What? Especially because we, I was she ever. Uh, no, we didn't know this. No, we didn't know any of this. Was <laughs> what do you mean? So does she have the force, and she had it the whole time? Is that what they're implying here? God, it's just another like Finn situation, you know? <laughs> he's like get that scene in Rise of Skywalker. He's like, right, I gotta tell you something, and then like he never gets a chance to and, see like, it. It's so stupid. She. She does not need to have this. She's already, like... Oh, my... She's a Mandalorian. She's the Mandalorian. Fuck Din Djarin. This is the real Mandalorian. Sorry, I got a little emotional there. <laughs> she doesn't have the Darksaber in this situation, too, either, huh? It's... Oh, no, no, she did give it away in Rebels. Oh, my bad. I forgot. She gave that shit away. It's How possible. is she not involved? <laughs> Wait a minute. How is she not involved in any of the crap that was going on right now with the Mandalorian subplot? <laughs> oh Didn't she care or did did she leave it behind because attachments? <laughs> it makes Please. no sense. Oh my god. Oh, no. oh my god. No. <laughs> like, no That's especially not true. She's looking at Ezra's message. No, no, especially because like uh, Is that why Ahsoka left her? Because she couldn't move on from Ezra? But that would make her even bigger of a hypocrite. That would make her an even bigger hypocrite. Ahsoka can't... Oh, my... (sighs) So many things happened just now that were like, what? Mm. Like, even if you watch Star Wars Rebels, we all did. This is just like a a thread that didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And they're expecting us to, like... Be on board with Know about this. (laughs) Like questions just keep coming up. Also, this this, this episode. This, uh, blah, 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 sorry, <laughs> this episode's moving way too slow. Like, there's so many things that we could just move along. You have eight episodes, people. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. It, this is on the longer side. This is the only one that's like 50 minutes long. Yeah, that's all, yeah. The next episode's like 44 minutes, give or take, because of the and and they get and they get shorter after that. Oh my so. god. But the length isn't the problem, it's the it's pacing. the pacing. Also, I really wish they kept Sabine's long hair in the show. I just I don't like the short hair. <laughs> Wait, are they in the in the ghost? Yeah. Oh okay. Mm-hmm. I was gonna I was gonna ask the same yeah. question. This is the ghost yeah. for you? I think so. Cause it can't be a Soka ship. I thought it was. No, it's pretty big, I mean. Like it's gotta be the ghost. The ship serves me for um, oh, okay. okay. Yeah, it's it's her ship, not the oh, okay. I go where I'm needed. About that. Where were you? <laughs> <laughs> the, the original trilogy happened. 
Where were you? Mm -hmm. There is nothing easy about being a Jedi. I thought you weren't oh a Jedi my though. What? God. what did... <laughs> <laughs> this it makes me so angry. I thought you weren't one, but now you're saying you. If I can. In the Jedi arts, they will be from <laughs> But, okay, so are they trying to say that they were Jedi and they turned bad? Yeah. Yeah, so, well, well, one of them, for sure, they have a record of being a Jedi. The other one, I'm not sure if she also was, um, or if she was, because she's really, she yeah, seems young. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay, how many minutes are we into this? So is Sabina Jedi now or what? What's going on I, there? She has the Force? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if she has the Force, but she probably was being trained as a Jedi. And I really don't mind the idea of Ahsoka like taking on an apprentice. Like, the thing is, like she was being trained to wield a lightsaber by Kanan. <sighs> she was being trained to wield a lightsaber for the purpose of, like using the dark saber on mandalore but once she like foisted that off to somebody else what need was there for her to be yeah continue to be trained in the lightsaber she did again she doesn't need this she doesn't need to be turned into a jedi to make her more interesting she By was already interesting enough the in the first order, place but okay. exactly <laughs> how do they, how how do the people no, that the are behind this not have these inconsistencies top of mind. Yeah. And like David was saying, I don't mind Ahsoka have, having an apprentice, like somebody to pass on her wisdom, if you must. Mm -hmm. um, but there's no way she would be training her the same way that she was taught. Like, Okay, so that's Ahsoka ship, and then there was drawings yeah. in there. Does that mean that they had a history before Rebels? No, I'm... I'm gonna think they're... I feel this is in between. Mm -hmm. In between Rebels and where we are now. In those seven years. <laughs> yeah, this is something yeah w that we didn't see. So this again, it is really hard to get uh, into this when we saw none of that. Like if I feel like if it's hard for us to understand, I can't imagine people going into this for the first time. Mm -hmm. Just like I walked away from Sabine. Why? There's so much why to all mm -hmm. of this. What do we do then? Man, I feel like the more that this goes on, and this is really bad, the more I feel like, what is what is Ahsoka's deal? Yes. I, all this is doing is making me more... Angry. Mm-hmm. Well, that's one of the emotions <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but it's just like, this is so unnecessary. If, you, if you're going to do this kind of relationship, show it to us. Exactly. Not that I agree with this decision to make her a Jedi in the first place, but if you're going to do it, show it to us. Even if, again, we watched every episode of Star Wars Rebels. I don't know why you're saying that pe people keep saying you need to watch Rebels. Even if you've watched Rebels, this is a whole new thing. It's like yeah. you needed to watch Rebels. It's like you needed to watch Rebels and a whole other show that never even existed to get what's going on here. It's like a sequel to a show we never got. This is what it's feeling like yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, already this is like 20 episodes. Like we need flashbacks to their training of whenever that happened and when no. she got that Get a lightsaber. Is that Ezra's? No. Didn't he have it with him when it when he was his green? I'm sure he had it with him. Yes, it was. Oh, and also his um, his wasn't like that. It they wasn't made like it. A stick. They made it thin. No, Ezra's lightsaber though. It was kind of like 
rectangular because it also like shot. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That was the first one. Remember, it got broke. Oh, okay, my bad. I thought he just. I think remember when he fought Vader, it got destroyed. Oh, right. He had a green one in the last two seasons. David, are you a fake fan or what? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you know, I'm starting to get the feeling, am I ever going to care about lightsaber fights ever again? I I mean, I just like, you keep giving me lightsaber battles with characters I just don't care about. Or not that I don't care about, but just just no investment in this. Also, like, I've also been like really, I watch a few videos of people like breaking down sword fights and everything. And whenever anyone does like a spin or something, it's just kind of like, don't do that anymore. They don't work. Unless it's like a dodge, but like literally right. those two spins that each character did just now, it was just for show. Oh, God. Um, uh, <laughs> are they gonna do that stupid healing uh, thing? No. <laughs> no, no, it's just no one dies from a lightsaber stab anymore. Like literally, what happened, that one chick in oh Obi Wan. That was Ray Stevenson who passed away, okay. who played uh, Balon. The... Okay, can we exit out of yeah. this? Yes. Okay. <laughs> we all saw her get stabbed with a lightsaber. Um, I am I to assume then what happens next? She is going to pull that whatever healing trick out of her ass, which I know Peter says he liked, but that's one of the things I didn't like so much about Rise of Skywalker, amongst a number of different things. But this whole ability of able of them being able to heal, I feel like that kind of opens a can of worms like we're seeing just now, yes. because that just means you getting stabbed by a lightsaber doesn't really mean that much anymore. And that kind of cheapens all of the other lightsaber deaths that we've seen in the entire Mm -hmm. universe of this movie franchise. So it's like, mm, yeah, it's not, if that's what, I mean, cause I don't know what else is going to happen to heal from that. Cause usually in this franchise, if you get stuck through a lightsaber, you're, dead yeah. yeah no and that's not gonna but happen this has been happening in a bunch of shows like i said oh no we won this happened with that one lady that was the sith that wanted to kill darth vader she literally got stabbed like at the end of the series and then we also see that she got stabbed as a kid by anakin <laughs> and she healed them both times and i mean it's just it, i don't know for some reason getting stabbed by a lightsaber just doesn't kill you anymore for <laughs> For some weird reason. You know what? It, 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 it was weird then, too. Mm-hmm. I feel like the justification at that point was, well, she uses the dark side and that was keeping her alive. But even that was a bit stretch, of a stretch. Yeah. Uh, here? There's nothing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Nothing. But by the way, that, that, that's just like the, the least of the problems going on here. It's just, again, this just happened at the very last second where I'm like... Ooh, yeah, you shouldn't have. You shouldn't have mm-hmm. done that. Why can't we? On top of, a, I just I really what? preferred it when they did it in um, uh, what is it? Force Awakens, where Finn just like got hurt in the back and everything. It was just like surface, yeah. um, cut or something like that. It's just like, why but can't we just do that full, anymore? Yeah, this is full on stab. Side stab. Yeah, I just I wish they would do that where it's just like literally just the single touch of the lightsaber just kind of like fucks you up. Why can't you just do that instead of getting stabbed? And I mean, I know why they did it in this one because obviously they're setting up for them two to be rivals, and then it's gonna be Ahsoka and the one uh, white-haired masters. They're gonna be yeah, like going that's why that's why it was so cool when Darth Maul came out with the double double edge because it's like he could even get hurt mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah i don't know okay i have many questions <laughs> it's a lot of thoughts um and we couldn't help we couldn't contain ourselves while it was happening before our eyes when it was like whoa 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 what <laughs> so many times um I don't understand any of it. Yeah. Like, I, I don't... They could have used the crawl to, like, at least explain that. 
not something that we've already seen. No, I mean the crawl is kind of pointless though too, just because they yeah. kind of the, like explain I said, it they again. Kind of used um the the voice thing. It, yeah, no, and but, they could have done it faster. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, like I said, the, the crawl though was just pointless because they literally just kind of re. They just said everything that was in the crawl, like. She Ahsoka literally mentioned that there was rumors about Thrawn coming back. Yeah. We saw that she was getting a map like right away, so we didn't really need to know like what exactly was happening in that moment. Another thing that I hated from Rise of Skywalker that they're seemingly just doing again, which was again, uh that stupid Pathfinder that conveniently it built into the the what was it called? The, the fetch quest. Yeah, built into the into the fetch quest of, of getting that thing that Lando somehow knew where it was, but also had to have been made after episode six because it depended on the coordinates of the destructed remains of the second Death Star. <laughs> Who in their right mind would build a fetch quest to the location of Emperor Palpatine and Exegol depending on the destruction of the Death Star? And then we're opening here in this episode... I get it. It's very much Indiana Jones-esque, her trying to figure out the puzzles and getting the thing. That's fine, whatever. But still, it's like, who would go to the trouble of making a map to Admiral Thrawn and then here having the thought of doing a treasure hunt and then just putting it somewhere for anybody to find? Yeah, especially because that that place belonged to that one lady that was in prison. Yeah. She Mm -hmm. probably knows where... He is. Why would she make a map in the first place? Why would place? she make a map? Why would she not like make herself the most valuable person and be like, "Yeah, I know where it is, but you, you can't get that shit out of yeah. me." Yeah. <laughs> we never had these questions and logic, did we? With the animated shows, right? Like, no, this just didn't happen. Well, the, okay, but it seems to, to happen with did, the live action, and we used to justify it with it's Star Wars. Yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> no, but like, it never to this extent. Well, Where, the, like, I mean, question, questions and basic logic, Alexis. No, hold on. Like the thing though with animation is because you have thirty minutes to, you know, tell a full story. It has anything to that is important for the plot, it gets told in that moment. Actually, I mean, it's been a while since I rewatched Clone Wars or even Rebels, so like I can't remember exactly. But like I rewatched um, Ben Ten, and in that episode, you know, every single one they tell you something new about the universe, basically. And it just you just kind of have to go with it, and that's basically how you how you how you do it in animation, especially in cartoons, you know. Mm. And so with this one though, I I don't know what they're doing. I feel like they're just kind of more stuck in the visuals and trying to make things last. And for some reason, and it, you know, it's Dave Filoni; he should know how to do this. Where like you add the fucking dialogue to help you like move along the story. You know. Yeah, like, he used to make 30, 20-minute episodes. 22-minute mm-hmm. episodes 50, where it was like... 50 minutes and you, I don't know what's going on? What the, do you mean? The, the one episode that stands out for me in Clone Wars is... There was this one where Anakin was, like, flying a ship. It was, like, super long and it can turn invisible and he can actually, like, hide under radars. And then that one, they, one of the first ones. Yeah, and yeah. they tell you like right away, like this is how it works. This is how we're gonna do it. This is how we're gonna execute it. And then you get little dialogues here and there from each character going like, "This isn't gonna go like the way we think. Prepare for anything." Blah blah blah. Like that is how you get character development whenever you even bring someone new in, you know. And you can complain about the dialogue and like maybe it just kind of like forced. It feels might might feel forced, but again, you have. 20 something minutes <laughs> to tell your whole thing so you just kind of have to work with that Him, this one though like he has he has the chance to like really spread it out to really like add things important to, things. important things to these characters to their history and he's not taking advantage of that <laughs> and it's just and, so and annoying why are you starting here like why it's okay another thing it's ahsoka this felt nothing like an Ahsoka show. She literally just walked, got a a ball, mm-hmm. went back on the ship. Also, her solving the puzzle was kind of lame. It was literally just the symbol was there all along, and then that's it. And why wouldn't why wouldn't um, Ahsoka know this? She 
knows them. <laughs> like, Ventress was, like, her... <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know if she even knows a lot about their stuff and all that, but, like, it's just... I mean, no, I just find Ventress that way... No, Ventress was, like, her, like... Counterpart yes. in some ways. Mm. So... Uh, look, I don't want to go over the, the semantics of that. There, there's like bigger fish to fry here. <laughs> I just feel like um, if we're going to s- step back and look at it, you know, from just a, a filmmaking 101 standpoint, let's just put the Star Wars issues aside for a second. <laughs> this was way too long. And ev- I feel like every single scene took forever to get to what it was even there to do. Yeah. I, I feel like this is a version, this is like, you, f- you get the feeling that maybe like, to he wanted to add an extra padding or something because mm. it, it took way too Ahsoka long. Ahsoka would not Every have taken that scene. long to get that thing. Yeah. No. Also, like, no, but she literally just had to spin the things to like the right <laughs> position. She literally was like, I know she went so fucking slow. In slow motion. You couldn't, you couldn't have just like have her go like you know twist the hand and then use the force to spin she, them. Okay, this is like she. Okay, this is how I picture it. She would have gone in there, looked around, done it in two seconds, and would have smirked, left. Mm-hmm. There, that's what she would have done. And then there would have been more banter though between her and those robots. I was like, who are you? She would have been talking also, to, to David Tennant the whole time. Yeah. And he would have been like, what are you doing? Mm. You know, they, they that's who she would have. This is what you do in animation, though, too. Like, you know, some people, again, some people say it will, it will be like forced dialogue or something like that. But like whenever you're in a situation that is just completely new, you don't know what's going on in that moment. You bring someone in that doesn't know anything. And then you have the main character explain what's going on or like what they're going to do next and all that. Okay, and you could have done that with David Tennant, or like you just could have had it being like he can I like see how what we she's. Don't know, like his character name, we're just gonna call him he, David Tennant. Hewing, <laughs> Hewing, yeah, Hewing, <laughs> Hewing. Do you all remember Hewing? He was in a uh, uh, that episode of the Clone with the arc yeah. with the young yeah, ones. Yeah, that was a fun so, episode. <laughs> which, how did he survive? Exactly. I guess it doesn't oh. matter. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like you have him, especially when he's a robot, he's not gonna know any, any of the anything that's inside there. And like that's how, just how you explain it. That's how you create dialogue and all that. And she would have had banter with the robots too. Being and like, why why is she not asking like who sent you, who are you, where'd you go from? Um, you're clearly mercenaries who hired you, blah blah blah. And it's like you know they're not gonna answer it obviously, but like that's just that's who she that's is. Who she is. Yeah. That was her whole relationship with Anakin. That's, that like, that's... Ah! <laughs> this is so frustrating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, I don't know. I just felt like we literally got nothing. <laughs> Well, maybe in some ways nothing would have been preferable because I think what was in here was um, some unfortunate developments. Uh, This isn't the way that this should have been um, unveiled if you were going to go in this direction. And it's really hard to see here which choice is the most upsetting. Yeah. Yeah. That's and that's not a good situation to deal with when you're left with like, okay, I'm not sure which part I hated the most. <laughs> Cause that's kind of where we are. Yeah. Also, we just need to know more about her and Sab- and Sabine. Like what, what do you is mean? your you're history? Gonna throw this at us. I know. Like, how is your first episode not just a flashback of them two training together? At the very least, yeah. right? To make up for lost time. No, but, like, show show them, show us, like, when they first trained and show us the tension. And, like, I don't know, maybe, like, make, make that, like, the whole series, like... That's what I'm saying. How are you starting here and not at the start of their relationship? Mm-hmm. No. If, if this is... <clears throat> 
my... what you're trying to tell, I think. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, so, like, clearly they're trying to do this whole, you know, the, the Sith Master and Apprentice versus Ahsoka and her and Sabine. Like, that's going to be a thing. And I feel like if you're going to make it a big deal about them not clicking together, you know, becoming Master and Apprentice, I feel like you can probably just make that, like, into the whole series and, like, at the end, reveal why they couldn't just get along or something. Like, make it, like, a really big thing. And then they come together at the end, too. And they realize, like, oh, maybe they, like, they kind of just learn something from the Sith Master and Apprentice or something. Like, I don't know. Just, just, there's so many things <laughs> that they could do here. They just kind of, like, speed things along and they don't. This is, all, this is a problem with all the Star Wars shows. The shows. Except for Andor. <sighs> Should we watch the second one, or what do we think? I want to see it, because I am so confused. <laughs> Should we just do it? Also, the way she saw the map was, like, the same way as Ahsoka <laughs> solved. <laughs> Why couldn't she do that again? <laughs> yeah, I was so uninterested. I was like, can we get on I with it know. already? No. We've done enough. Oh. <laughs> Did she mean that to come out the way that it did? <laughs> I don't know. I genuinely don't can't know tell. based on that look. Yeah. Uh, they're not <laughs> making her emote or, or anything. Just, you can't tell. Is that? I don't know who that is. No, I was going to say the planet. Is that Ventress's planet? Or... No, I don't think it is. She has a Padawan braid. Hmm. <laughs> 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 so now, an you had to find it in some place, find some way to unlock it, and then also bring it to another Stonehenge area, and then it activates something else? <laughs> yes, duh. <laughs> Isn't it obvious? <laughs> you know what it should have been? It should have just been a signal to like let Thrawn know, hey, come back, like it's time or something. And let that be the race and then have that Ahsoka and Sabine like decide like whether or not they should activate it or not. You know, like if we don't, you know, that keeps throwing away. If we do, we can set up a trap, you know, and Sabine, the one, Sabine can be the one that'd be like, well, all out assault, you know, let's get him. And then Ahsoka, I don't know, maybe she's just kind of like, no, let's, let's per not start a battle. How about that? <laughs> yeah, because then like, also, am I wrong in thinking that like Ahsoka was not that close to Ezra? We didn't see her really interact yeah. with them. So, like, why would she be so... We need to go find Ezra. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, that would make more sense. Yeah, as okay. That's why Ahsoka would be like, no, let's leave him where he's at. And then Sabine be like, no, he has Ezra. So I was wrong then. She didn't use a, a force heal power. Well, I guess that's that. But then it still means that, oh, they just got her some medicine and she's going to yeah. be fine. <laughs> Gee, I wonder how Qui Gon Jinn must feel right about now. If it was that easy, <laughs> so, well, I guess he just preferred cremation. <laughs> Shit, <laughs> Qui Gon's just like, just give me to the hospital, babe. And Obi Wan's just like, no, you're not gonna make. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you were still here. I thought she was gonna thank the cat. Wait. <laughs> she... Imperial operation. She oh my god. Rebellion. Okay. No, cause the. Oh my... Check on that? <laughs> <laughs> what? <clears throat> I just feel like. Everything you knew has there, been erased. There, well, well, it's like there's an interesting story to tell somewhere in there about why the New Republic failed, right? Mm -hmm. But it seems like 
between what I've seen in Mando season three and this, it's like they've just decided, okay, so the reason why why the New Republic failed and the First Order rose in power was because they were incompetent. What I don't like about making the New Republic... I'm sorry, I'm just going off on the tangent here. (laughs) Looking competent is like, look at what a great job they did to make Mon Mothma look good in Andor. But you're saying if the New Republic is incompetent, you're saying so is she, because she's supposed to be in charge. Uh, Well, I don't know if you knew the background, but it was only after Mon Mothma's death that, like, the New Order started rising. Because she... Because everyone always had tension in, in in the Senate, you know. One people, one person said like, "We got to fix this this way." Another person would say, "You got to fix this that way." And she was the one that I was always constantly being like, "Okay, however way you want to fix it, you're not gonna fight over it. You're not gonna like, you know, we're not gonna like let this rise any further." Like she was the one that like stopped everyone from kept like the peace. kept the peace. Yeah. And so after her death, that's when everyone was like going off. Now, like finally, we can do some stuff our way. When did she die? I have no idea. But was this in that Bloodline book? N- no, this was something else. I-, I can send you the link of the podcast that I listened to. They did like a whole thing about Mon, Mon Mothma. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 really interesting. Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> I wonder if she's bald. Yeah. They weren't all bald though. Okay. The Death of Mere Witches. Yeah. Remember, they some of them had hair. Yeah. Ventress is gonna have hair, and she had grown something. Yeah, yeah. In but then they canceled it. They <laughs> <and laughs> moved on. Not over it in ten years, and still not over <laughs> it. That was, oh God, I'm so. This is like another thing that I'm just like. What the fuck? Yes. <laughs> oh. That. This is when they decide to bring it back. She looks really cool, the blonde-haired girl. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's. It's kind of interesting the way they dressed her up because she's not in all black. Yeah. Like a Sith would like be. Like she's wearing the like the robes and stuff. Mm-hmm. And they're brown. Are they Inquisitors? Mm, I guess they are. I mean, I. I'm just trying to wrap my head around the the phrasing that she used. Grand Admiral Thrawn is banished. He wasn't yeah. banished. He was literally shot into space. I, <laughs> I how does that count? Unless he chose to stay there as a personal. But it's like, if you're Grand Admiral Thrawn and you survive that whole thing, why wouldn't you just come back? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unless you just lost there, but. <laughs> Clearly, people know where you are. <laughs> Imagine he's just lost. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you worry about their loyalty? Not at all. The average worker doesn't care about the nuances of galactic. Oh yeah, sure. Let's just go ahead and invite the Nazis to run parts of every. Uh, sure, leave the politics up to you, and you get another war. I'm just. Oh man. This is just not even Star Wars pissing me off. This is just politics pissing me off. It's like, what government in the yeah. right mind invites Nazis and installs them in, in levels of power to be throughout in their entire part of society? Government? Why does Hera seem more... I'm curious. Uh, with the personality. Why does everybody else seem more to have more of a personality than Ahsoka? Mm-hmm. Poor Qui Gon Jinn, man. <laughs> Wait, did he voice him in Clone Wars? I can't train. Oh, okay. Ahsoka yes. Want to teach. David Tennant has more personality than Ahsoka right now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you see the best thing, best opportunity. Ahsoka lived through the Clone Wars and lived through this war. How is that not messing her up? Like, how is that? Not affecting her in any way. And imagine Darth Vader, Darth Vader, Darth Vader, Darth Vader. Where the fuck was she when that was going down? Okay, so she she for sure has no force powers. Welcome it's to the just control. pure training. <laughs> so why train her at all? As a Jedi at all? What? But what, what? Again, by somebody who left the Jedi. 
<laughs> and and like, don't you think that? I mean, maybe that's why she left too because it, it hit too close to home with her and Anakin's relationship. But why are we seeing that? Like, the trauma that she's been through is like what interest mm-hmm. uh, in her character again. Why would you let Nazis into your government and in positions of power? What did you think was going to happen? Mandalorian already did this better. They literally got people who were in the Empire and just made them work like super low level like office jobs. And that's all they did. And they also like put them together in like one place. Like, um... She could totally (laughs) take down that shit. (laughs) She could take down that shit. Wait, wait. Would, were they waiting for mm. her there? Just standing? Like, what? Why weren't they in the ship? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a weak ass <sighs> jump. Now, that ship looked a l- really close to her. Like, a lot closer than the ship that Maul was taking off on mm-hmm. was. And she just stood, stood there. there and yeah. let them yeah. get away. Okay. <laughs> She could have made the jump too. If that guy made the jump, she could have made the jump too. And she wouldn't have just stood there. Mm. Okay, it's not that big of a deal that she's cutting her hair, right? Like, am I missing something? <laughs> she, she's done it before. Yeah, like, I think I kind of get it that like she grew it out after the war, you know, because like she's no longer battle ready, but she's doing it now. I just don't think it has to be that big of a deal though. It could have just been like she grabs it. You know, looks at her hair, and then you move on to the next scene. It just kind of seems like she's just there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also, this is just my complaint with, like, Mandalorian and Boba Fett. Like, what's the story here? Like, I I generally don't know what their character arcs are supposed to be now. Like, is it just... I'm accepting someone like i'm bringing someone into my life what's the story here i don't i don't understand is it supposed to be that moment yeah at the end of rebels where but she had a staff though and you know what the, you know what the story could have been it's them to <laughs> trying to figure out like who they are or who they want to be you know like part of you know part of the reason sabine wants to like be Ahsoka's apprentice is because she does look up to Ahsoka. You know, she literally led the rebellion. She's a Jedi. I mean, who wouldn't want to look up to her? You know? And, like, she doesn't want to just be... She won't, Her being a Mandalorian is also tied to her being in the war. And so she wants to move past that. And she, maybe she thinks that, that being, like, a Jedi is that. And then maybe with, I don't know, Ahsoka, she... But you could have done that without... Having to make Ahsoka a Jedi again. No, I mean, that's the thing. That's That could be the reason why Ahsoka takes her in. It's like, okay, I can teach you, like, what I've known. But, like, I'm not a Jedi and you won't be a Jedi, you know? Uh-huh. So, like, they can try and figure it out together, you know, what they can be. And it can just be something else for Ahsoka, too. Like, she doesn't know who yeah. she is either. In the sense, and she doesn't know who she is without a war, you know, and that's something that she mm-hmm. can try and figure out. Like, where do I go from here? And the other reason why she wants to, she doesn't want to look for Ezra. She just wants to look for Thrawn because, like, she knows that is a threat. But that that's also something that, like, that's a purpose in her life. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was an episode. <laughs> 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 questions comments concerns this could have been told in like 10 15 minutes <laughs> <laughs> i mean it, like what did we find out they took a ship <laughs> and they're going to this in system. two episodes all that happened was that they took a ship yeah and Thrawn and may still might be out there banished. Maybe not banished. I don't know. <laughs> we still know nothing about Thrawn. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> I don't know what else. Because nothing happened. <laughs> nothing ever happens in these shows. <laughs> you know those people? You know the ones that are so deluded that walk out of good movies and then they say that nothing happened? <laughs> Like, didn't, um, what's his name? <laughs> One of the Logan internet's... Logan Paul? Paul Logan, whatever the fuck? Re- resident, resident douchebags, Logan Paul, just say that, um... I don't know if he did, or maybe he wanted to walk out of the tent because there was nothing happening. Or they were talking too much. <laughs> but people weren't even talking here. Barely. Oh God! So the first episode was written and directed by Dave Filoni. The second was only written by Dave Filoni, and yet they felt remarkably similar, which pretty much confirms just about every way imaginable. The issue going on here is the writing. Yeah. Um, for a multitude of reasons, the writing is the issue. For one, again, on a base level, w- filmmaking 101 standpoint, what are the the easy problems to, to pick apart at this that are not concerned with Star Wars mythology or preferences or what have you? Well, like you two were just saying, we just saw two whole episodes, one of which was the better part of 55 minutes and the other one w- which was 45 minutes. And yet, all that seemingly happened was they got a ship. They got on a ship, and now they're going to where they're going to go. And I feel like, in a weird way, and I think Peter called this, he said, the way that I would feel about this show is the way that he feels about Rebels. And man... How sad if you really look at Rebels like that because, I I mean, yes, most of what happened here was relatively nothing. Mm, There was stuff happening around it. They kept alluding to things but never really tackling head on. Like, I don't understand... Um. Oh, I, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, yeah, th- nothing really happens. They're too long. The scenes move too slowly. Uh, also, there's not much really talking, as you say, going on. So there's re- re- rarely anything interesting happening to keep your attention. And I feel like, especially with this one, I just found myself, okay, move on to the next scene, move on to the next scene. I, I, okay, I've already mm-hmm. decided I'm not interested in this. Let's move on to the next scene. And then you'd think that, and then also it's just, I mean, it looks okay. It looks good. No, yeah. But it also, do, it, it, it's not directed very interestingly. Yeah. Like the camera is not, the camera feels very static. Mm-hmm. Um, the performances, I, I, I feel like given the scripts that they were handed, I, okay, I, I can maybe say that, the one with the most personality here seems to be Hera, and that just seems like a really strange outcome. Yeah. Consider- considering who the other character is at play were, and also considering how much attention they were giving to Sabine, she was very solemn and very, like, she looked like she was having inner monologues the entire yeah. time, only, only like, we don't really know what's going on in her head. Um... Uh, this whole thing with Sabine being trained as a Jedi, but her clearly not being able to use the Force, I feel like that needs to be, at the very top, kind of addressed yeah. as to like explaining what the rationale behind that is. Because... How can you be a Jedi, but you don't have the ability to tap into the Force? Like, at 
that seems to be a base level requirement. And, you know, if that's the decision you want to go with, why wouldn't you include any material in this in the first two episodes to address what would be some pretty obvious questions from fans and non-fans alike as to like, wait, what? What do you mean? Like, again, this is the person that just recently in the 15th anniversary panel at Celebration was saying that some of the episodes for Tales of the Jedi he wrote because of some fan criticisms that he was hearing about, particularly among others, why Ahsoka was able to deflect so much of the clone troopers' firepower. Mm -hmm. And so he wrote a whole thing about it. So if this is somebody who claims to really be in tune with the fandom, could he not see coming a mile away the kind of questions that come? If you're already going to do this, which we've already said why that bothers us, it's, it's just a story that never even happened. At no point do they make any attempt to show any flashbacks mm -hmm. or a flashback episode. If, I mean, Yeah, if, if, if you were going to use Tales of the Jedi to address some things this is a big thing to address <laughs> <laughs> i would think so as well and the other thing is and i feel this is a pretty substantial thing is sabine i guess was left on lothal to be some kind of marshal for lothal but it seems an interesting character choice that one of the more well-known Mandalorians would choose to, in some way, leave that behind because she wasn't wearing her armor. It seemed, I guess the implication was that she left being a Mandalorian behind to be a Jedi, even though she can't use the Force. Mm -hmm. At some point, this happened after Episode 6. Um... But I guess that's how you explain how she was literally not even so much as mentioned when it came to a show called The Mandalorian, <laughs> when it was literally about reclaiming Mandalore. I guess that's how you get around doing it, but it just feels like a character pivot that really wasn't what was intended there clearly from the, its very inception and they can't they can't say like oh well i don't know like you had dave filoni involved in all of that and you didn't think yeah. to bring in this character i don't know like, you can't make the claim that this is like a WandaVision yeah. multiverse of madness situation when you have different creators behind the wheel. This is Dave Filoni. So it's like, what what's going on here? Is he, I, I mean, I, I'm getting the sense that he has lost focus yeah. For what these character what these characters should be. That's number one. Number two, I don't like having to say this because of how much I really do think that um the stuff he contributed in animation is amazing. But it may just be that um he needed far more training, if you will in the live action space yeah than what he had before he not only was given a show like this but then also a movie because the directing the i mean his directing in the previous seasons was fine it wasn't anything special and i get that for somebody who's just starting out in live action but the screenplay writing here is i'm sorry to say stunningly abysmal mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pr it's pretty I, I, bad. And you can tell mm -hmm. that he hasn't moved on from, like, the formula that he had. Because how David said, this could have been told in 15 minutes. He had so much room to add more things. Mm -hmm. And all we got were 
transitions. A lot of transitions. Yeah. And and it also like bugs me. Like it the show looks pretty. I haven't really seen like something that looks bad. But it like irks me that they use a lot of shots that they would have used in Clone Wars or in Rebels. And it's like why why not just do it in animation? Like mm-hmm. and I I also don't understand Dave Filoni did not contribute alone to Clone Wars and Rebels. There was a whole team behind mm-hmm. him. A whole team of episodic directors and writers. Why does it not occur to anybody that maybe they should have been involved in the mm-hmm. show as well? Yep. At the very least with writing the scripts. Yes. Like I they full yeah, go ahead. I um going back to like the characters I don't like the way that they're portrayed even even Hera even Sabine like I'm not feeling it I'm not Mm -hmm. and then Ahsoka I think is the worst of all of them and I don't know if that's like, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's Rosario. I don't know if it's the writing. I ha- The directing. I have no idea. It just... It, it, it It's weird. Like, she looks weird. And she acts... Not like Rosario Dawson acts weird. But just, like, the things that she does is so out of character and... Like her movements, and I'm sorry, the fighting does not look good. It's just weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like this is. I gave it a little bit too much hope. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all did, I and mean, we were kind of hoping, like, okay, Dave Filoni, you know, he's going to get something right, right? <laughs> and <laughs> we're just kind of like, we're not seeing you here, man. Like, the only moment that I was like, okay, this was kind of fun, was when she was, like, hacking into the droid head and all that. And you just kind of, like, you know, there was building tension. They were all reacting differently. They kind of, like, Ahsoka's the one being, like, it's like, okay, you gotta move faster. Come on, let's go, let's go. And then, but Hera, she was the one that was, like, genuinely scared the whole time. Like, there were, there was something going on between all of them. They're all acting, like, themselves and everything. And then that's just about it. Everything else just it wasn't really clicking much. Um, you, I think it really. I think it might be the writing, or I don't know. I mean, maybe just Dave Filoni doesn't know how to <laughs> direct um, actors, like in live action and all that. Because when you're um, with voice acting, it's not it's not really Filoni who who would be doing who would be like directing the actors. Mm-hmm. Uh, when they were recording it's someone else entirely that like does that um i can't remember the name of it but like this happens this is in um uh the last airbender podcast um braving the elements they they mentioned like the uh, the actors they mentioned like someone else basically like talked to them while they were recording it wasn't mm-hmm. brian konietzko and i forgot the other guy's name <laughs> um they Dean Martino. Martino. Yeah, like, it wasn't them. It's someone else. And so maybe he just doesn't have the experience of like directing people at all, really. And he just kind of needs to practice that. I don't know. Oh, Rod. I, I, this was very yeah. weak. Very weak, and I feel... And it's, it's the same problems. A thousand years older. It's, I feel so old. It's, in just these last two hours. And it's just the same problems as all the other shows, except for Andor. <laughs> oh, I remember. Um, also, did you guys notice that it is the first project in Star Wars with mainly all women? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I noticed it. Yeah. I noticed it too. And I kind of 
hate it. <laughs> <laughs> this sucks. Not because it's all women, but because it just it's not good. Yeah. Also, Hera's child. Where is he? <laughs> I, I I want that answered. <laughs> Non-existent. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Is like Luke is around, mm-hmm. right? Shouldn't he be involved in this? Yep. There's no way Ahsoka would not be near him. We got a missed opportunity in them meeting for the first time. Literally the first time was in Boa Fett, actually. I mean, it wasn't their first time meeting, but like, it was the first time we saw them interact. And it was a freaking Boba Fett in those Mandalorian episodes. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. This is not the story that they should be telling. Mm-hmm. It, it's not. And and there is something interesting in, you know, in this in Ahsoka and Sabine's relationship, whatever that is. Um, How do we not know what that is? Two episodes exactly. in the show. Exactly. But there's something there. There's something in every inch of the show. But it's not happening. And it's frustrating. Uh, I am so <laughs> like anxious to go online and see what people are saying. Oh my god, I swear. If I hear one... one, If I see one tweet... The first thing that pops up. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you re- I was really about to say if I see one tweet people saying that this is the greatest thing in cinema since the Mandalorian I quit Dave Filoni dropped the best Star Wars since the Clone Wars ended is that literally a reaction? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Qui-Gon watching Sabine get stabbed in the stomach and it's terrifying oh my god <laughs> It's now a meme. That's that's like how much they've reduced that to. How much of a joke it's been made. Okay, everybody, thank you for staying tuned. If you stay tuned, um, if you're able to keep your attention, um, thank you again, and thank you again. I feel like I'm out of commission. Thank you, Alexis, <laughs> and thank you, David, for whatever this was. Again. All of our content, Red Spotlight, YouTube, Spotify, uh, CastBox, Apple, anywhere you listen to podcasts. we got more content on our channel. Go ahead. Check us out. Leave a comment. Please react however which way you want in the comments below. We love f- for more engagement. Um, okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.